Ladies and gentlemen, our next speaker or the next session will be held by Dr. Rani Radhakrishnan, a pathologist by training with keen interest in hematopathology and immunohematology. She completed her undergraduation from Kasturba Medical College, Mangalore, and her diploma in clinical pathology from the same college. She did her DNB in pathology from Apollo Hospitals, Chennai. She is heading Crest, Crest Laboratories based in Chennai, providing credible solutions for healthcare diagnostics. Please give her a round of applause, Dr. Rani Radhakrishnan. May I please also invite on stage Dr. Vipul Patel to felicitate her, please. The session is going to be on end-to-end -end solution engineer for hematology operation. The session will be for half an hour. Doctor, all yours. Yeah, I'm, thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thank the organizers for having me here. And the next half an hour, what I'm going to discuss is how the face of the hematology laboratory has changed in the last, say, couple of years. I think if you look back at your training, hematology was confined to a small little place next to the sink where you had to do the training, I mean the staining, a small colorimeter to do the hemoglobin, and a small, probably a binocular or a uniocular microscope to look at the slides. We've really, really come a long way. Today, we've got end-to-end -end solutions for all the different processes in the hematology lab. We wish to have this in each of our laboratories. We hope to have this in each of our laboratories. But while we don't have it, we can at least understand what many people have and hope that one day we will be there. This is probably what very ancient labs look like. And from there, we've moved to something like this. We've, like I said, we've come a very, very long way. And as all of us are aware, we first started automating the biochemical part of our laboratories. One, because the workload in biochemistry was much more. Biochemistry offered us better automation. And I suppose the vendors were also selling semi-automated and automated biochemistry analyzers. So since then, it has always been the dream of the pathologist to automate hematology because there was so much of manual work involved. And we moved on. When Neil Armstrong landed on the moon, the first thing he said was, a small step for man, a giant step for mankind. And I'm sure that Wallace Coulter, when he patented his impedance theory, said, must have thought about the same thing, or he didn't think about it. But to us, that little discovery of the Coulter principle was definitely a giant step, because it brought about the beginning of cell counters, the beginning of automation, and the beginning of, of three and five part cell counters. So I definitely think that it was one of the biggest discoveries that hematology has had in a very, very long time. So now we have automated cell counters adorning almost every laboratory right from the uh, major metropolitan cities to the three tire, I mean, th three tire cities or the small PHC laboratories, all of them definitely have an automated cell counter, be it a three part cell counter or a five part cell counter. So, at least the basic manual process we have been able to eliminate. So, the repetitive tasks have also been eliminated. But still, hematology is full of manual tasks. You have smear making, you have staining. You, and you have microscopy, and these need technologists. And I'm sure all of us will agree that this is a breed which is becoming scarce, which is becoming difficult to find, which is dif becoming difficult to train. And our expectations from our technologists are also increasing day by day. By day. Do we need solutions to sort this out? Definitely we need, because we need to, and, and there's so much pressure on us, both from the management, from the clinicians, and from our patients, to improve upon turnaround time. This morning, there was a uh, discussion about giving a CBC in less than 60 minutes. And all of us know that if you have a platelet count of 20,000, you cannot give out the CBC in 60 minutes. But that is the expectation, and that is what they want to achieve. I, 
I don't know if, if we are capable of doing that even with all the automation that is available. So we needed manual intervention for smear preparation, for staining, for smear study, for validation of cell counter reports, for ESRs, and for review of abnormal results. So even despite the cell counters coming, we still needed all these. What about sample collection, sample transport, the pre-analyticals? They were not automated. They still needed phlebotomists to collect samples, courier boys to transport the samples. Then was the introduction of the pneumatic tubes, especially in close places like hospitals, from which we were able to tra transport this from the point of collection to the point of